Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. Coming up in today's headlines, city volunteers in Paraguay are distributing daily necessities and blankets to help residents cope through the cold winter. To celebrate the 20th anniversary of the City Teachers Association, 1,500 teachers return to Hualien for a global seminar. And in our feature report on Taiwan's fading trades, we meet Hong Quan Rei in Pingdong, who is a talented ship builder. In Paraguay, with daytime temperatures only around 5 degrees Celsius, many local residents are having trouble withstanding the cold. To help on July 15th, city volunteers held an aid distribution at Bernardo Takumbu. This time, the volunteers distributed daily necessities along with blankets, helping 100 senior residents and 27 households in total. To reciprocate city's love, the seniors later donated money to their coin bank. Let's welcome city volunteers from Taiwan. On this cold winter day, with temperatures around 5 degrees Celsius, city volunteers in Baragwe are holding a relief distribution. The materials and a hug from the volunteers warm the hearts of the local residents. Under the encouragement of local volunteer Brasilia, everyone kindly donates to their coin bank. Before the relief distribution, city volunteers visited the homes of many seniors. A bed and a cupboard, this is the conditions many live in. Many of them also suffer from poverty and sickness. However, they can only wait hopelessly. Seeing the filthy living environment of these seniors, community volunteers express their concern during its city volunteer training program. Brother Ji Ting, who recently visited Taiwan, shares with everyone the importance of recycling plastic bottles. He hopes to encourage people in his community to practice recycling. He also took the opportunity to demonstrate the city etiquette. During today's sharing, volunteers remind each other that to make their society a better place, they have to start with changing themselves first. Suji's New Shoot Scholarship Program helps needy families send their children to school. This year in Malaysia's clan, around 10,000 shifts of Suji volunteers were mobilized in three short months to visit the homes of the scholarship recipients to conduct evaluations and help those in need continue on the education path. Inside these boxes are the applications for Suji's 2012 New Shoots Scholarship Program. Next, Malaysia's Klang Tsuji Volunteers Mission will be visiting the homes of these scholarship applicants. We have received about 3,300 applications. This amount has increased 80% from last year. Conducting home evaluations not only tests the volunteers' patience, but their intelligence as well. This region is mostly Indian. They communicate using Tamil. We don't understand the language, so we try to read their facial expressions. Some scholarship applicants live in such a remote area that even GPS is of no help. This isn't a real road, it's just a dirt road. That's why it's not on the map. We can only follow the electricity poles. Sometimes volunteers will be unable to locate the residents. When this happens, they try and try again, because behind every application is the dream of continuing education. These children are not so lucky. Our one home visit can help them to turn their life around. With this money, I can help my son to pay for his school tuition. Visiting New Shoots scholarship applicants takes time and energy, but if the child has a chance at continuing education, all the hard work is worth it in the end. Also in Malaysia, a small apartment in Penang was invaded by termites. Around 20 city volunteers and students from City College of Technology teamed up to help the care recipients relocate to a new home. Thanks to City, the care recipients' future are looking bright. 
Although one or two termites won't be a problem, a swarm of termites can be very threatening. Already, two doors have been attacked, and residents fear that the doors may crumble with the slightest touch. The termite problem is getting more serious. Termites are building a nest here. I can hear the sound when they are biting. The care recipients have lived in this dark and stuffy apartment for almost 10 years. Since 2010, Siji volunteers have been persuading them to move, but they have refused. However, with the termite problem getting worse, they are left with no choice. Volunteers and students from Siji College of Technology decided to help them relocate. Today, we will bring what the owner needs to his new place. When everything is settled, we will come back here and take the recyclables to a recycling station for sorting. New furniture provided by Ziji has been delivered to the new house. Ziji volunteers assemble the furniture and take it to the 12th floor by elevator. Together, they discuss how to decorate a comfortable home. The air here is well ventilated. The balcony is big enough. Although the owner has limited mobility, we suggested that he could sit outside in the afternoon and enjoy the fresh air on the balcony. <laughs> I'm very happy because the volunteers helped out. My family is happy. The volunteers have been kind and helpful. Without them, we would never have been able to move. They are great. Care recipients are satisfied with the new house where they can continue to live healthy lives. the 20th anniversary of the Ciji Teachers Association, nearly 1,500 teachers and Ciqing from 16 different countries returned to Hualien to attend the Global Annual Educational Conference in hopes of gaining both wisdom and Dharma. At the opening ceremony, they also took to the stage to perform a section of the Water Repentance Sutra. The performance of the Water Repentance Sutra by the teachers from the Ciji Teachers Association and Ciqing's starts of the Global Annual Educational Conference. On July 19th, 1,500 teachers and Ciqing's from 16 different countries returned to Jingzi Hall in Hualien to attend the opening ceremony of the Global Annual Educational Conference in hopes of getting more wisdom and dharma. <laughs> The first class of our volunteers has cherished their good affinity with Ciji and have been good role models for many. Ciqing should also know how to be a good role model. The teachers should also be a good role model for their students. For the past 20 years, Ciji volunteers, teachers and Ciqing have carried on the mission of being good role models for society. What is Ren? It is compassion and great love. It is very important that all of you carry on this mission. Now with their hearts and mind filled with wisdom and dharma, the Ciqings and teachers from the Ciji Teachers Association hope to continue on with their mission of being good role models for society. 
The establishment of the Tsiji Teachers Association dates back to 1990 when Taiwan's stock market crashed, causing disarray in society. At that time, Tsiji volunteer Chen Mei Yi, who was an elementary school teacher, met a taxi driver who had some quite negative impressions of teachers, and she was inspired to make a change. Chen decided to share Tsiji's values and humanitarian spirit with teachers from around the island. Two years later, on July 23, 1992, the Tsiji Teachers Association was funded. Today, in celebration of its 20th anniversary, we meet a few of the very first teachers that helped establish the association. This is the first Tsiji Teachers Association uniform, and the former one is the Scion Coloured Chilsum. There were only 13 around the island. Today, the uniform has been changed to this light blue coloured top and white pant, and the former one is this two-piece white and purple coloured dress. The history of Tsiji Teachers Association dates back to October 1990. <laughs> when Taiwan's stock market crashed and society was in a state of disarray. Tsiji volunteer Chen Mei Yi, who was an elementary school teacher, was inspired by a taxi driver to establish the group. He said, from when I was little, I have always been whipped by my teachers. They are worse now. They all like to buy lottery tickets and stock shares. Buying shares was very popular and common, so many teachers listened to the radio. The negative impression towards teachers shocked Chen Mei Yi. However, she patiently explained and introduced Tsiji to the taxi driver. At the end of their ride, he was quite impressed. <laughs> Seeing how the seeds of goodness can have such a positive effect, Chen decided to share Tsiji's humanitarian spirit with teachers from around the island. We started promoting Tsiji's humanitarian spirit on school campuses by gathering teachers together. These booklets were published some 20 years ago to help teachers incorporate Tsiji's values into their teachings. Two years later, on July 23, 1992, the Tsiji Teachers Association was formally established. On the day of the opening ceremony, over 1,000 teachers gathered to witness the historical moment. Today, 20 years on, Lin Shou Lan and Lian Shou Ying, who are now in their 60s, were one of the first few educators to be teaching Jing Si aphorisms to their students. They also promoted this teaching method to other teachers. Every week, we will stick a large poster of Jing Si aphorism on the blackboard inside our office. We are able to put Jing Si aphorisms into practice in our daily lives, which is really wonderful. Over the past 20 years, many teachers in the association focused on teaching Jing Si aphorisms and even promoted the system overseas. The relationship between teachers, parents, and students is close. Lin Su Zhen, a student's parent at Tianmu Elementary, has not only supported the teachers' association, but has also helped fund the parents' development classes. For the parents' development class, we focus on topics such as communication or health-related issues. The support of parents is one of the most important forces in the successful establishment of the Tsiji Teachers Association. As of March 2012, 1,614 teachers have been certified as commissioners, and 143 teacher-related events were held last year in which which 14,000 shifts of volunteers were mobilized. All in all, it is evident that Tsiji's love has taken its root in schools around Taiwan. Next, we meet Kaohsiung Tsiji Teachers Association member Zhen Chun Mei, who has actively educated new immigrants at Gangsan Tsiji Ground since 2004. To her students, Chun Mei is a mother figure, and Tsiji is their second home.
This is the road from Kaohsiung City to Tsuji Guan Shan Grounds in southern Taiwan. Zhen Chunmei has traveled the same 40 kilometers for the past eight years. Master Zhen Yan inspires us to have a compassionate heart. In the last eight years, I have followed my compassionate heart from Kaohsiung to Tsuji Gang Shan Grounds. Zhen Chunmei speaks about her students from Vietnam, China, or Thailand who have married Taiwanese husbands as if they are her own children. To help these new immigrants adapt to life in Taiwan, Guanshan City Grounds have held development classes since 2004. Before, when I did not know Chinese, when my child would come home with a paper for me to sign, I wouldn't understand any of it. Chunmei's compassionate heart tells us to always attend class, like we're going home to visit our family. They refer to me as mom. Of course, I'm humbled to accept that title. From these classes, I've gained so many daughters. Even their children will call me grandmother. Besides vocational training courses, Chunmei and Siji volunteers have also influenced the family life of these new immigrants. This one belongs to the husband Yang Chao Sheng. This one belongs to Ding Shi Luan. At the start of the development classes where they are lacking in confidence to seeing them later actively taking part in performances and study groups, I'm quite proud of them. Since joining Tsuji Teachers Association in 1998, Zhen Chunmei has promoted Tsuji in schools and helped many in disaster relief distributions. When you motivate teachers, you motivate children. These children are our guardian angels. I often say when kids learn positive words and good deeds, they will share them with their family members and we can purify society. Bound by the responsibility of preserving wisdom, Zhen Chunmei leads the way for others to follow and she promises to continue on the Tsuji path. My only wish is to continue to follow Master Zhen Yan. Pingdong's Donggang Township lives Hong Chen Rei, one of Taiwan's foremost shipbuilders. Many of Taiwan's modern day dragon boats have been designed and built by Hong, but his real claim to fame are his model ships, which range from a 2000 year old Roman galley to a 17th century Swedish warship. Despite their popularity, the ships are not for sale, but have been loaned to the Donggang Museum, where Hong hopes to bring more tourists to Pingdong and also preserve the art of wood shipbuilding for future generations. The first thing one sees upon arriving at Hong Chen Rei's house is his model of the infamous Swedish warship, the Vesa built in 1628 by a well-known shipbuilding family in the Netherlands. On the boat, the king himself added a row of cannons. However, the cannons were placed too high and being unstable. On its maiden voyage, the ship sunk. Sixty years ago, the ship was completely recovered. I went to Sweden to check it out. With its blueprint, I made a model of it. The, the original sunk, but mine, when I put it in water, is very stable. In order to find out the reasons behind the sinking of Vesa, Hong Chen Rei made a special trip to Sweden for further research. Back in Taiwan, he began to reproduce the ship in exact detail, including its more than 700 statues and ornaments. Large ships have gaps between their planks, about the size of a little finger. The gaps are then plugged with wood, so they don't leak, as the wood will expand in water. A small model like this, however, I can be more precise. I have tried to make it so, not even the hair can pass through. That is what I consider a good piece of artwork. Born into a carpenter family, Hong Chen Rei was a natural already in building wooden fishing boats by the age of 20. However, as fiberglass slowly replaces wood, he was forced to change jobs. 
Hoping to bring more tourism to Donggang, he decided to start making models of ancient ships. In 1994, we held a cultural event. After that year was over, I was thinking about what to show people the next year. I thought that since I make boats, I should make boats for the exhibition. It was from that time that I started to make model boats. This Roman galley sailed the seas 2,000 years ago and was the first model made by Hong. He put it together by referring to a blueprint and using his own imagination. Overall, it was a technically difficult project. If you look at the stern, the blueprints go from bottom to top. The arc hooks in as it thrusts upward. It was hard to make, and the blueprint for it was also hard to draw. That was one of the challenges that I needed to overcome. The models that Hong makes are different from the average carved ship because the entire ship has to mimic the dimensions of the original, from the planks, cabin to even the windows. Hong Chen Rei says that in making the ship, the hardest thing is the exterior and properly bending the wood into the correct arcs. The wood has to be steamed. If the wood is not steamed, it won't set. Once steamed, you can bend it to the angle you want. The smaller the model, the harder it is to do. To make one ship, it usually takes anywhere from one to two years, but for Hong, it is a labor of love. Among his finished works are Zheng He's treasure ship, a dragon pleasure boat, and a Viking galley. He keeps up his fevered pace to leave behind a legacy of the dying art. There is no need for this skill anymore, even for the best work. So I am first making these models. If in the future, one day society has a need, they can take a look at my models and copy them, thus shortening the time of learning. In addition to making models, almost every dragon boat in Taiwan has been designed by Hong. As teams look to him to create a boat that has a high load capacity, is nimble and does not overturn easily. The distance in the middle is set, but in the front, if it is too narrow, for example, if one side narrows five inches, then the two sides together will narrow one foot, so the contact surface will be one foot smaller. But if the contact surface is too narrow, the ship won't be stable. The nets and fish in the sculpture are also made by wood. A fishing village needs fish and nets. It represents a hope for the future of this town. Hong has taken his shipbuilding skill and introduced it into temple architecture. The Zhenghai Temple here at Donggang is full of references to the sea, such as the wave-shaped lines of the main altars. The wall was originally made from a piece of wood five to six feet long that was then bent to make a double-side curvature. Regardless if it is temple architecture or boat design, Hong is doing his best to use his skills as much as possible. He hopes to open a wooden boat museum in the future in order to leave behind examples of the skills and wisdom of the art of shipbuilding for future generations. We stay in Taiwan at the end of our program today and joined Siji volunteers, Si Qing's and Tima medical staff as they visited senior residents living in the remote mountain areas in Miaoli to provide medical treatment. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Dai Headlines. Goodbye.